guys, Zeke and Maker here, the Bully Boy himself, coming at you with another episode of Trash Talk with Bully Boy. Thanks to our sponsors, Brass Knuckle Mastiffs, breeders of badass guard dogs. These dogs are monsters and will protect their family if shit hits the fan. Check out the socials, Brass Knuckle Mastiffs. Up the link, Tattoo Studios. Up the link has studios in Morley, Margs and Bali with the dopest artists. Check out their socials, Up the link. Of course it hurts. Today, we have a killer guest. He has had two fights in his fight career. He is a really dope coach. He is the proud owner of Next Generation MMA Mandra. And if he keeps training hard, he might be able to beat me. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one, the only, Marcus McKeever. So, Coach Becker, how are you, bro? Good, Zeke. How are you, man? You good? Yeah, I'm good, bro. Okay. <laughs> so, with all this uh, coronavirus stuff happening, uh, what have you been doing in this lockdown? Uh, oh, just I've been I've been working, man. I've been back doing my normal job, and uh, oh. obviously doing a bit of training at home. But yeah, that's really it. Oh, yeah, nice man. Um, and uh, with this training, with with training, how old were you when you first started training? Um, <clears throat> I was twelve, so I started I started boxing at twelve. Uh. I, 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 and, I, and I had my first fight at 14 because you couldn't um, – where I boxed in, uh, in New South Wales at the time, it was – you had to be 14 to, to fight. So, um, yeah, so I was like just in, just in high school when I started. I, I didn't do any training before that or anything like that. I mean, I used to watch all blood sport and all that, and I, was, I love watching all those movies. But, yeah, just actually started officially training when I was – yeah, I was about 12. Oh, yeah. And with training, like, with the boxing fights, because you'd only be 14. What, what is it now? Isn't it, like, you can be 12? I, I can't remember which one. It, how old is it now? It just, it just depends mm. what state, I think. But I know over here I've seen some really young kids doing exhibitions and stuff. So I'm not sure the, the, <clears throat> the actual age here, what it is. But, but yeah, I mean, um, yeah, you know, it's uh, – I think it's good, yeah. You can go, you know, as long as it's safe and everything's uh, protected. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it would be cool to do that. I reckon it would be really cool to actually be in a boxing fight one time. That would be super cool. You're gonna, you're gonna, you, you, yeah, you should definitely have a go. You reckon you could do it all. Yeah, it would be cool. Oh, yeah. I'd love to watch it, bro. <laughs> and um, so uh, when, when uh, back in the uh, early days when you were training, so you said you were 12. So uh, who was your biggest inspiration when you were first on? Um, <clears throat> obviously, uh, around that time, I used to, there was there was a, a boxer, uh, Kosha Zoo, and he was like, yeah, he was pretty awesome to watch. And because we didn't have, uh, it's not like now, where you have all the, um, the you know, heaps of uh, pay TV fightings everywhere. You know, then there was used to be two boxing shows, Bill Morty Fight Night, and Jeff Fennick Fight Night. And I used to watch... Uh, Funny enough, I used to watch John Wayne Parr on uh, on uh, uh, on the box. He was a professional boxer for a little bit, and him, and then uh, also Anthony Mundine, because he played for the same team that I used to like. So yeah, he was a pretty inspiration, even though he's a bit mouthy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what about no? Who's your inspiration now? Oh, don't know. Any heaps of people, young guys like you as well, definitely make you inspire. Um, as far as like, who I'm, who am I a fan of? Who would you uh, want to, like? Yeah. Oh, who who would I be a fan of? Yeah, definitely a fan of like um, <clears throat> uh, in in MMA, obviously. You know, everyone loves Khabib. He's he's pretty awesome to watch. Um, and another um, probably in Jiu Jitsu, probably Hodger Gracie, Gordon Ryan, those guys. Yeah, they were pretty pretty awesome to watch. And I guess if if you like watching them, they inspire you. So yeah. <clears throat> Man, I remember watching the Khabib and Conor McGregor fight. It was nuts. Like at the end, Khabib just goes, go, runs out of the cage and just starts beating up this guy. Crazy stuff, bro. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was mad. Oh, uh, your. Yeah, it was maybe not the best thing. It was pretty. Did you hear me, hear me, bro? Uh yeah, I was all glitching out before, but I think oh. it's okay. Yeah, it's okay now. All right. Oh, good. Uh, so your last fight was on September the 16th, 2017. Do you plan to fight again? 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'll fight. I'll just start. I've got a few uh, little things, injuries and that at the moment that I need to get sorted. I had a little, like, a, a mine operation last year to see what was down, going down, but in my knee, so just to, to a camera go in there, <clears throat> but they have to go in again, but obviously with all this coronavirus, so because I'm getting pretty old now, I, I, you know, I want to make sure when I fight I'm healthy, so I'll – um. I'll wait till that heals. So maybe it could be another year or so. But and I'll and I'll and but uh, yeah, I'll just gotta be gotta gotta be patient. Well, man, I really do want to compete too. Like, cause with all this coronavirus, can't go to any competitions. And we missed our thing uh, up in uh, Melbourne. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Melbourne. Yeah, we missed yep. that because of the coronavirus. Yeah. Coach Anthony was spewing. He was ready for that that trip. <laughs> Yeah, no, it would have been, it would have been so cool. Yeah, no, nah, it would have been awesome, man. But you'll have plenty of opportunities. It'll, it'll also all be over soon, and then we'll get back to living, living how we did before. So you'd be right, plenty of time. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, um, with your fighting, what's your most memorable fight you've ever been in? My first, my first ever boxing fight when I was a kid. So I remember, um. Uh, it was at um, Sorto Sor- Sor- RSL in New South Wales, and I was fighting one guy, and then um, back, you know, he he didn't he didn't he didn't show up because back then a lot of the kids that lived out in the bush um, that would box it couldn't always get to the fight shows and stuff, um, so he obviously couldn't get there. And then um, I had been talking to another kid earlier who was fighting that night, and uh, and we were just sort of talking, you know, all friendly. And then he had a young, another lad with him and we were around the same weight. And he said, well, my, I was just here looking to get a fight, a match. And then I said, oh, well, I haven't got an opponent. So we talked to our coaches and they talked to the, the, <coughs> or the registration people there and they set it all up. So we ended up, we were just, <coughs> we were just talking to each other and we sort of said, oh, well, we haven't got, a, I haven't got a fight. And then we just agreed to fight each other that night. And I lost, I lost oh, on point. Man. But it was good. It was um, good. I went the distance, and yeah, it was. It was definitely scary. It was awesome. So definitely my, my, my most memorable. Last man. Um. So if you could fight anyone, past or present, who would it be? Uh for like <clears throat> for for difficulty. I uh, well everything. I reckon. Um, yeah, I reckon. Yeah, I think I'd say GSP would be a wicked guy to fight because you're, you're gonna have to train pretty hard everywhere. Obviously, he's uh, he's the best there is, I think. But <clears throat> yeah, if you could fight someone and say you fought someone, I think he'd be a pretty good guy because he's a he's a he's he's a good uh, not not only the best probably the best fighter ever, but he's uh, he seems pretty humble on that. So <clears throat> oh, I reckon those are the, those are good guys to fight. Mm, nice man. Um, I would I would really want to fight either um, maybe Conor McGregor or Khabib because I, I don't know I just really want to. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. yeah, nah, for sure they'd be awesome guys to fight. What do you what do you reckon? Uh, what do you think Conor Conor's most dangerous uh, weapon would be? What would you have to watch out for him? Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I'm not sure. Didn't want him to hit you with that left hand, Zeke. He's pretty yeah. hard, eh? Mm, I've always got to keep my hands up then. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's sick. He's, 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 he's real good. Yeah. yeah, powerful. And Khabib, what, what, what would you be worried about, Khabib? What would you train? What would you try to try to defend? Mm. Oh, I'm not sure. There's a lot to defend from him. He's a really good, he's a really good trainer. You wouldn't want to get taken down by him, eh? He's pretty tough. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I do got that double leg, so I think I'll be all right. <laughs> That's it. You get him back down. You get him down. Good. That's nah, good, bro. <laughs> yeah. And um, so what's re- what's more rewarding for you, coaching or fighting? Uh, well, to be honest, I've uh, co- yeah, I, I obviously think coaching is rewarding because you, but but fighting is obviously it's good to be selfish as well. I think you should be. I think like. <clears throat> Yeah, if you fight, if you're a fighter and you uh, you know, you need that time to do it for you, then that's what it's all about. So, you know, it come, yeah, I think I think both are pretty rewarding. 
think uh, mm. I think just having the gym's rewarding. Not co- no. even even the, even the people in there are just uh, coming in to just uh, get a bit of fitness and that. Yeah, that's pretty rewarding to see as well. So it's all it's all got really good points. Mm, nice man. And you are also the uh, proud owner of Next Generation Mixed Martial Arts, the best gym, I reckon. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what made you want to open uh, your gym? I just wanted to. Well, I like teaching. I was I was already had been, um, you know, I always I'd been teaching a little bit here and there anyway, um, and um, I have like a lot of good experiences. I've trained with a lot of different styles of people, even my grappling. Is a little bit different, so I just wanted to. And we had there was nowhere down here to, to really train, as far as I was aware. So it was just, yeah, that was basically what it was. It was just a mix of everything. And then I, you know, it was over that I'll travel 35, 40 minutes to train somewhere that I, you know, and um, so I chose to do that instead. And yeah, it's good. It's been really good. We've had you know, heaps of good good kids down there and heaps of good people. And so yeah, definitely a good decision. Yeah, you yeah, I really like your gym coach bag. It's super cool. Yeah, I'm with that man. It's good. It's really good. We've got a good crew of people. So small gym but but good gym and tough gym. Mm, I'll be really happy when all this coronavirus stops so we can go back to the gym. Me too, bud. Yeah, keen to get some rounds in. But yeah, hopefully it won't be too long. Hopefully they'll uh they'll let us start training again real soon. <clears throat> yeah, hopefully. Um so what advice do you have for anyone that wants to make it uh, into uh, MMA in that? Uh, I, yeah, probably if you had asked me this not long ago, I would have said something different. But I would, I would say make sure you educate yourself in, um, in other areas of your life. So, for example, you're, you're, you could be a really amazing fighter if that's what you want to be, but you're also really good at rapping and all that sort of stuff, so, you know, man, that's good. You should be doing other stuff, and you should be able to do it. I always put all my eggs in one basket, but I think, I think you should educate yourself in other areas, and it'll, it'll help you fighting. If that's what you want to do. It'll still, you see a lot of the UFC, the top like guys in the UFC, say you at the UFC for example, they all you know come from college wrestling, got degrees, they're smart, you know, that that's what you want to be like, you know, be 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 educated and a good fighter. So yeah, yeah, that would be the one. <clears throat> nice. Uh, and uh, where where do you see yourself in five years? Um, <clears throat> hopefully I'm rich. <laughs> I don't know. Probably doing the same thing <clears throat> I'm doing now. But yeah, yeah, probably just hanging around Mandra, bullying you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, giving you the old uh, triple decker peckle wrecker at training, mate. That's what I'll. That's what I'll be still doing. And how old you? Be, where will you be in five years? Ten. Yeah, where will you be in five years? Um, I have a a suit, a suit, a really good uh, fighter, or a um a rapper. Uh, I already am, but like a famous rapper or both. You know. <laughs> you but should yeah. be both. You could. You could be. You could. Yeah. Rap and sing, you know who 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 do you know that who do you know that who do you know that fights and uh, raps at the same time? Um, I'm not sure, man. Roy <laughs> Jones Jr. and he's a, he's a badass. He <laughs> sings. Anthony walks out to his songs. He rocks out to oh. Roy Jones Jr. and he was a world champion boxer. Yeah. Oh, that's man. I could be like him. Hell yeah, be like him. I'll call you. Twenty percent, Zeke. Twenty percent. <laughs> all right uh this is the most important question of this whole type thing it's very important okay so i gotta ask would you would you prefer dick shaped nipples or a nipple shaped dick 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 shaped nipple dick dick shaped nipples or a nipple shaped dick yeah oh, the, the, the dick shaped nipples for sure <laughs> why why do you think that? Why? Yeah, well, why? Well then you got two extras. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be the king, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you rather? 
Uh, I, I'll probably go for the dick shaped nipples too, just because Ooh, like. <laughs> I was gonna give it to you then, mate. <laughs> That's good, good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, um, that's all for today. Thanks for coming on my show, Coach Macca. Awesome, Zeke. Thank you, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. All right, cool. Uh, see you, bro. See you, Bella. Thanks for tuning in on this episode of Trash Talk with Willie Boy. And thanks for Macca for coming on the show. It was good yarning with you. Make sure to go check out my sponsors, Arthur Link Tattoo Studios and Brass Knuckle Mastiffs. Make sure to go like, subscribe and share. See ya.